Hi, my name is Torik, and I'll be introducing today a truly fascinating product called Sensible Table View. So you're probably here because you're wondering what's all the Sensible Table View buzz about. Well, um, I think a big part of the excitement is that people are for the first time able to go from their own object classes to their final iPhone or iPad applications in literally minutes. And um, as an iPhone and iPad developer myself, I personally promise you that what you'll experience today will forever change how you develop your table view applications. So the whole story began when we wanted to develop a table view that is just plain sensible and easy to use. We wanted no cumbersome data sources and delegates, no complicated models to drive these data sources and delegates, and no custom cell subclassing to achieve common tasks such as just placing a text view or a text field in a cell. We wanted the solution to support all iDevices. We wanted it to support full customization. And we wanted it to support native development right from Xcode. And of course, to be fully compliant with Apple's developer license agreement. So let's get started. So from Xcode, I'll create a new project. And let's just select a navigation-based application and name it Sensible App. Let's maximize. And let's just give a title to our application. Sensible App. And let's change the style of our table view. Of course, this is not required by Sensible Table View. So I'll change the style to Grouped. And finally, I need to add the Sensible Table View classes to my project. So add existing files. And I'll choose Sensible Table View classes. And I'm all set to go. So these are actually the classes that Sensible Table View uses. And I'll now need to add a Sensible Table View model to my root view controller. And a model is actually the main brains behind all of the Sensible Table View functionality. So let's add one here. Let's add one here. And going to the implementation file, I fortunately with Sensible Table View, do not need all of these data sources and delegates. So let me just remove them. And I also do not need all these methods. So let's remove these two. And let's create an instance of Table View model here. Of course, don't forget to release it. And let's create a section. Give it a header title, section header. And add the section to the table view, table view model we've created. Now let's add a cell. Let's do just a, a text field cell. And give it a title text field. Let's run. And that's it. That's a text field. Also notice how Sensible Table View created a section with the section header specified. So now let's create some more cells. Add a slider cell, a switch cell, And a selection cell. A selection cell actually needs an array of items. So let me create that here. And it'll come in handy later too. So item one, oops. Item two. Item three. And then I assign these items to the selection cell. And let's run and see. 
So that's a text field, that's a slider, that's a switch, and that's a selection. I personally think it's amazing how easy it was to create these cells, especially a selection cell, since creating them manually, I would have needed to create a detailed view of all the selection items, and using sensible table view, all this is done automatically, which is, to me, it's, it's such a time saver. Um, now that I've created the cells, I need some way to extract the values. How would I know the value the user entered in text field or the selection item the user selected in the selection field? And Sensible Table View actually provides three main methods to do that. And in this video, I'll be discussing the most common and the most convenient method, uh, which is called object binding. And an object binding, the cells actually bind themselves to your own object's properties. And whenever a cell value changes, uh, the, the underlying property value automatically changes. And of course, you can control this. You can control whether the, 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 your property changes live as the user is entering uh, the data or at your convenience when you want to actually commit this data into your object properties. So let's see this in action and what I'll be doing is I'll create a mockup of a, a task management application and I've actually created some task class that I will add to my project now. So let's see that. So actually let me add the task object that I've created. That's it. And let's have a look at it. Actually, my task object is a simple object that contains a task name, a task description, a task due date, and whether the task is active or not and the priority of the task, and uh, a set of category indices where um, you would place here the index of the category that the task is of. So let me add the task object to my view controller. And on the implementation file, I'll create an instance of the task and release it. Now I remove all these and I will add a text field cell and notice that this time it will be bound to an object and the bound object will be my task and the bound property name will be name. Similarly, I'll create a text view cell bound to my task and property name description, now a date cell containing the due date, bound object my task, and property name due date, switch cell for the active property, and the slider cell slider cell for the priority and finally a selection cell for my category with items selection items and let me just modify these items to be home work and other and what I'd like to do now is that whenever a cell value changes, I need to log all the values of the object property of my task properties to the console screen so that I would see if, if if the property value actually changed when the user changed the cell's value. And the way to achieve this is by adding what's called an SC table view model delegate to my root view controller. Uh, and add a corresponding method that's called value change for row at for row at index path. And in this method, 
I will add, I will just have my task log its values. So my task log task, and let me just initialize the name of my task to my name, and I'm all set. Now let me open the console window just to view the object property values and notice how the object property values are changing whenever a cell value changes. Let me modify the due date and modify the active and actually values are changing in my object. I, I truly think that's that's amazing. That's really amazing. Select a category. And as you can see, the category indices have changed. Finally, I'd like to show you how to customize cell control values. So I will change the maximum value of the slider cell to 10 instead of the default one. Let me move the initialization upwards. Add priority cell and now priority cell dot slider dot maximum value. It's as simple as that. Oops. I think missing bracket. Okay, that's it. Let me open the console window and change. And it's actually ten instead of one now. So what I've actually done here is that using just a handful of lines of code, I have a fully functional user interface that represents my task object. Furthermore, each of my task properties now gets its value from a cell that's bound to it whenever the value of this cell changes. I find it truly incredible that Sensible Table View did in minutes what would have taken me many hours to achieve alone. However, there is one more thing. We've actually asked the question, what if Sensible Table View can actually automatically generate the user interface for us just given the my task object? And the result was just fascinating. We've actually created what we call an object section, which given an object, it will scan all of its properties and automatically generate corresponding bound cells. Let's see this in action. Let me start by removing my previous code. I won't need it. And remove the section that I've created all together. And now let's create an object section. My task section. Given a header title. And notice that I give it an object here. I actually give it an object, the my task object. And let's add this section to my model. And that's it. That's all I need to do. Let me run. Now let's stop here for a second and try to understand what's going on. What I've actually coded is just one line of code. And in, and in exchange, I have a table of cells that represent most of the properties of my task. In addition, if you notice, the property names have been reformatted in a user-friendly manner. However, I do have some issues with what have been generated. First of all, the order of the properties is not necessarily what I wanted. And in this process, I had no control whatsoever on the order. The second is the cell types. As you can see, the cell types are either of type text fields or date fields, date cell. And actually, Sensible Table View had no way of knowing that active is a switch or priority is a slider, for example. And this is actually normal since at the end of the day, all these properties are either of type in a string or in a number. However, I still would like my cells to have their corresponding, to their, their correct corresponding controls. And the third issue is that the um, category indices 
are not present. And th this is because Sensible TV View does not have enough data about the, the actual selection items to be selected. So before, before delving into all these problems, let's first have a look at what have been generated for us. Let me open the console again so that you can see the bound properties and actually see that priority has been generated as a numeric text field, also active numeric text field, due date as a date field, description as a text field, and notice that the bound properties are changing on the left, and name also as a text field. and everything is changing. Now I want to go back um, to my task object and let's have a second look here. As you can see most of the properties are either of NSString, NSDate or NSMutable set and there is one integer that have been completely ignored by um, Sensible Table View. And the reason is that technology that Sensible Table View uses to bind itself to the properties uh, only supports uh, types that descend from NS object. So if in your own classes if you'd like to use integers, you should use NS number instead. So back to our discussion. Um, to be able to solve the issues uh, of the cell types where um, priority, for example, is not a slider, uh, it has been generated as a text field, we need to somehow extend the definition of these properties. And actually, a Sensible Table View has a class called SC Class Definition that makes all this much easier, easier than it sounds. Um, uh, a sensible table view class definition is simply a collection of property definition where you define the property types and uh, optionally give them attributes that define and customize their underlying uh, control cells. So let's see this in action. So I'll go back to my root view controller and add a class definition called task class definition and I will give um, the task class and I will indicate that I need to auto generate my definitions which means that um, uh, the task class def will, has, will have all of its property definitions uh, done automatically. Now I will get the first property definition with name description and change its type to text view. I'll get the second property definition that I've been generated called active and I will change the type to switch and priority and I'm going to change the type to slider. Finally I need to do the category and this is property. Notice that I'm not uh, redef I'm, I'm not specifying the types for every property because some properties uh, th th have been generated with a correct uh, cell type. So the type here is property type selection. And I need to add attributes where I'll add all the selection items array, so I'll selection attributes, items, selection items, and let me move this up there, yep, allow multiple selection no and allow no selection no. And the title is category. Now I need to modify my section declaration 
ended with class definition, test class definition, and I'm done. Now that's much better. As you can see, the category is now fully functional, and the priority is a slider cell, and active is a switch cell. Uh, one thing that's remaining is the order of the properties, and this can be easily solved by just specifying property names to the class definition. So it's just name, description, due date, active, priority, and category indices. Let's run again. Oops. And now everything is perfect. Now, one very cool thing about class definitions is that you can actually include objects inside of your own object. So I'm gonna now include an object that I've created before called tax task steps, which is which actually represents uh, steps that you need to complete the tasks. And as you see here, test steps is about step one, step two, step three. So I'm gonna go back to task and add task steps dot h and add an, ins uh, an instance of the object here called steps, create a property for it and the implementation file of tasks I will synthesize it, create an instance here and deallocate it now all I need to do is add steps to the class definition here and set its type to property type object and give it a title of task steps now let's run and we see task steps here that's actually amazing however as you can see the order of the steps is still um, uh, missing and all I have to do is create another class definition for task steps so I'll do that quickly here test steps class definition so give the class the property names and we'll give the titles the property titles and that's all I need to do. Your attributes, desktop class, and run. Now it's working perfectly. B, undo, C. And if you go back again, it saves all the values, and it's all working flawlessly. So actually using Sensible Table View with its class definitions and object section, we've gone such a long way from doing all of this manually, because now we have um, user interfaces automatically generated for my task and even for its sub-object task steps and everything is working flawlessly everything is being saved where it should be and um, uh, it has saved us already a tremendous amount of time however we are still away from a fully functioning application and our promise was to build uh, a fully functional application within minutes so we've taken all this a step further and we've created what we call an array of objects section. Uh, so let's see this in action. Let's first remove what we've done before. So I remove the task section and my task. 
and I'll go to the header file and actually create an array of tasks and um, let me here create task 1 and give it a name of task 1 my task 1 and create task 2 my task 2 and create allocate the array of tasks as an array of objects task 1 and task 2 don't forget to release the two tasks and the task array now I'll create the array of objects section and notice that I specify the header and the items the tasks array and the class definition of the object and the array. Add the section and I'm all done. As you can see I have my task 1, my task 2. I can click here, modify the name of the task, go back and it's modified here, go to task 2, modify the date, make it active, select a category, and even type several steps if I go back everything have been saved and that's truly incredible now what I need to add to have this um, a full as a full-fledged application is the ability to add new objects and to modify them, delete them, modify the order, and um, sensible table view have made this extremely simple. So let's see. I'll go back to my code here, and I need to add two buttons to my navigation item. So I'll create the first add button item. This, by the way, has nothing to do with sensible table view. I'm just creating normal user interface elements and adding them to my navigation item. So this is the add button on self navigation. Left navigation equals add button item and release. Now the right button item equals self edit button item. And all I need to do is go here to my task section and specify that the add button item is the left bar button item. And that's it. So let's tap the newly added add button item. And notice that Sensible Table View have created a brand new object. So let me set the name. some description change the due date and set some other values finally just click done and here is my newly added task I can also edit the tasks by rearranging them and then Sensible Table View will actually rearrange the task on the array and even delete a task from the array. So that's it. We're almost ready to have our full fledged application. However, there is one missing thing, one last missing thing. If you notice, when we created a new object, the done button was available even though we haven't entered the name yet. And this takes us to the issue of validation and sensible table view. Validation is actually a big topic in sensible table view. So I'm just gonna 
cover the most basic type of validation, which is um, required property. So let's have the name property as a required property and let's see what's going to happen. Now all I need to add validation to the name property is set its required property definition to true. That's it. Nothing more. And I'll also specify that the task section detail view is a model view. And run. So now when I add, notice that the dumb button is disabled until there is a valid value in the name cell. Similarly, if I remove the name here, the thumb button will get disabled. Also notice that if I change, if I make any changes to my object and just tap cancel, nothing has changed. So that's it from our classes to our final full-fledged application in less than five minutes. Thank you very much for joining me today. I've barely scratched on the surface of Sensible Table View here, so make sure you check the other videos and documentation available on our website. Also, we're having Sensible Table View under a special promotional launch price, so make sure you grab yourself a copy today. Have fun coding. Bye.